Hi guys, Kelvin here. So the NZXT H510 Elite is an alter ego compared to the standard edition. It emphasized the design language further by having dual sided duct tinted tempered glass right here, the two 140mm ARGB fan 2 on the front, the smart device 2 controller hub, the LED strip right here to provide some underglow into your PC hardware right here, the single 120mm fan on the rear right here, thus the $150 price point. Now it comes in two color options, one being fully black right here and a color option of a combination of black and white. Looking at on the top, the I.O. has been changed a little bit, this time with a 4-pin combo audio jack. Don't worry, they included an audio splitter cable for your dedicated headphone and microphone jack, a single Type-C Gen 2 port, a single Type-A Gen 1 port and a power button. Looking at the front and the side of the case right now, the dual dark-sided tempered glass helps to lower the RGB brightness in return for more saturated color look. A smoother ambient glow, I would say, over those other cases that emphasize too much brightness and lower saturation. The side tempered glass is held down by a single thumb screw on the back and the glass does not fall out instantly. Instead, you have to pull it towards you as it's held down by some push-pull tab built into the case, similar to the front case panel as well. My unit is the consumer batch, so there isn't any glass wobble like previously reported in earlier reviews. The front airflow intake is located on the back of the case that stretches from the top to the bottom with a 3cm width as well as another one on the bottom of the case right here. Both have dust filter that can be removed for easy cleaning. Looking at the airflow intakes and how the direction of the fan is installed, this is a positive airflow intake. Looking at the bottom of the case, the four feet with silicone grip bottom help to increase the case height by 2.5 cm. Good clearance for bottom airflow movement. Here we can see the power supply has the dust filter and the removable hard drive cage. Here you can adjust its position through the sliding rails and lock down by screws. Looking at the back, the side panel is removed by pulling it towards you. The cable management here is the best in class and is what NZXT case are known for. The large CPU cutout helps to change any cooler mount in the future. You can mount two SSDs just below the CPU cutout and it comes included with the two included frames. There is plenty of room on the bottom left of the case right here. In fact, the extra cables that I have right here is just sitting above the hard drive cage, which can hold up to two mechanical hard drive. In fact, there's a lot of room right here. You can actually use cheaper power supply with thick braided cable or custom sleeve cable that is thick in size to hide the excess bit on the spacious area right here. Now, when it comes to the void area or the spacing between the main frame right here and the back panel, there is a gap of 1.5 cm when it comes to the top bit, the right bit, and the center bit right here. Now, when it comes to the power supply, there's a gap of 2 cm on the bottom. But generally speaking, if you remove the hard drive caddy right here, there's a total void area of 26 cm by 20 cm by 10 cm. So there is a lot of room for playing cable management right here or going custom water loop, which one of my favorite YouTubers, Optimum Tech, has done it. I'm just a big fanboy of that channel. Back to the cable management part right here, on the top and right side of the case right here has guided areas for the cables to latch on for easy cable management right here. The left side right here have latches where you can use zip ties to cable manage the IO cables as well as the front fans and radiative cables right to the bottom right here. But the magic source of the NZXT case right here is this curve plastic bracket right here that guides the cable from the motherboard down to the power supply. Looking at the insides of the case right here, it can support a full-size ATX board neatly and beautifully. It can support GPU lengths up to 360mm in length. Looking at the power supply shot right here, the top is fully ventilated but you can mount your SSDs on the front right here. Yes, and the reason to this approach is you can use and show your ARGB SSDs right here to add more glow or fanciness to your PC build setup right here. You can put it in a vertical or horizontal mount configuration right here. And I wish NZXT included a third plastic frame right here where we can do so on the front of the case, where we can use two brackets where we can mount high capacity SSDs like the Samsung Evo, QVO, one terabyte, two terabyte on the back and the ARGB one on the front. So if you are a 3D file maker or a designer, if you can design such file and put it in Thingiverse, let me know in the comments below. I'm willing to share the video description and credit back to you because I would like to mount additional SSDs on the front and I believe a lot of users would do so as well. Now the radiator mount bracket right here is hold down by two thumb screw. It can support two 120 or 140 fan configuration or a 240 or a 280 liquid cool AIO setup. Here I have the NZXT 
Kraken X62, which is a 280 AIO setup right here, configured like this. And you may notice that I included the two radiator fans right here because the included two 140 fans is nice. It provides good airflow without radiator configuration. If you're doing that kind of PC build with a typical CPU block tower, it's fine, but I like radiators. And when it comes to airflow, it's not enough to push into the radiator to cool it down. So I put the extra included radiator fans from the Kraken itself. So this would help cool down the overclocking processes easily. I will explain about the temperatures in a little bit. Now you may notice there is no middle frame in the case right there. It's basically this part right here. This helps to hide some of the cables from your motherboard to the back of your PC case because this one invades into the radiator fan right here a little bit. Now I'm, I wouldn't mind not having this because number one, my cables are black and once you put the duct temper glass itself, the duct tinted temper glass itself, you wouldn't see the cables easily. So I wouldn't mind not having the middle frame right here. So one of the main highlights of the case right here is this right here, the vertical GPU mount holder right here, which is the most simplest design in the market. It can support GPU lengths up to uh, two width slots right here. So all you need to do is buy the extension cable from your motherboard to the graphic card and mount this and it's good to go. It's rather stable. But again, if you're going with vertical GPU setup, the temperatures will be a bit higher by three to four degrees on average. So if you want performance and cooler GPU, just mount it horizontal like this. If you want to show off your GPU, go with this GPU bracket right here. Looking at the fan support once more, the back can support a single 120mm fan or a 120AIO. The top right here can support a single 120 or 140 fan configuration or a 120AIO. Now the question is, how good are the temperatures when it comes to a full PC build like this and overclocking? For that, I have to check my notes because I'm a forgetful person, so don't mind me. Now we managed to overclock a 3600X processor up to a stable 4.325 GHz at 1.25 volts. That's the lowest voltage I can go from my testing with an average rendering temperature at Adobe Premiere 4K for 30 minutes of 71 degrees Celsius. When we swap it to IDA64, the temperature is 78 degrees Celsius under the 80 degrees threshold. When we swap the processor to the 3800X, because I'm doing two overclocking videos, we managed to stable clock up to 4.3 gigahertz. The voltage unknown, but it's still low. I'm still testing it with a average temperature of 76 degrees Celsius under the 80 degree threshold mark. And this test is actually done in a hot environment, hot humid environment in Malaysia. Nilai is like a hot desert around me. The ambient temperature is 30 to 35 degrees in the afternoon. So this is like the worst case scenario for the setup right here. If you are running this PC on the ambient temperature of 24 degrees to 25 degrees in an air conditioned room like this, it can knock down easily from a five to, to a three to five degrees easily knock off. It will be cooler with air conditioned room itself. So airflow is fine. Cooling is fine. Temperature is fine in my opinion. Would I recommend this case? Hell yeah, it's a little bit on the pushy price point, but you're getting a lot of value. You're getting the LED strip, the two 140mm uh, fans on the front, the smart hub where you can configure extra LED strips, extra fans to it. So I believe it's value for money with this extra features right here. And for me, it's compact size. It looks amazingly elegant and beautiful, especially with the dual sided dark tinted temper glass. It cuts down on the brightness and add a uh, mouth saturation into your eyes. It looks just amazing. So thank you for watching this video. If you're interested where to purchase this case, including the updated price links in video description below, comment below what other NZXT products we should review next. Remember to like and subscribe and help share this video on social media that will give us the necessary boost to get more content for you guys in the future. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next case review. I love this case. I'm going to hide it. I'm not going to let people take it. It's